Hello everybody, Chaplain Bob here, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. This is going to be part two of Unleavened Bread. Uh, but before we start, I want to give you a little something to think about. Um... This Hebrew root sacred name stuff is really getting crazy. Uh, it comes from the you know who's. Uh, it uh, rhymes with news, and uh, the word starts with a J. And uh, this Yeshua stuff. Now, I'm not saying that everybody that uses that is wrong and evil and all this stuff but when you trace back the root far enough you're going to find out where it comes from uh, there's a group called the noahides n-o-a-h-i-d-e-s matter of fact uh, go to google and type in noahide n-o-a-h-i-d-e one word space and then type in yeshua y-e-s-h-u well y-e-s-h-u Yeshu, and uh, there's a very interesting article there by, um, I think it's the J-A-H-G uh, group. Read it real carefully. Yeshu, Y-E-S-H-U, is a curse. And uh, some people will take and put an A on the end of it, and they think they're honoring Jesus. There are 5,000 fragments of Greek manuscripts of the New Testament. There are zero, zero Hebrew ones. Zero. So, you know, and the whole purpose of this group is to discredit the entire New Testament. Now, let's take a look at something. In Matthew chapter 1 and verse 21, now, this is Gabriel, if I remember correctly. Gabriel speaking here. Uh, he says, And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. For he shall save his people from their sins. Matthew 1, 25. And knew her not, speaking of Joseph, and knew her not till she had brought forth her firstborn son, and he called his name Jesus. All right? Now, it doesn't say Yeshua anywhere or Yeshu or whatever. All right, let's take a look at Matthew 14, 13. Jesus says, And whatsoever ye shall ask in my name. Now, if his name's Jesus and you're calling him Yeshua, uh, is there a problem, Houston? And whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If ye ask anything in my name, I will do it. Huh. Verse 26, John 14, 26. We just read John 14, 13 and, four, uh, John 14, 13 and John 14, 14. John 14, 26. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name. Ah, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. Very interesting, huh? All right. Uh, so, is the name Jesus important? Well, I think so. Now, if they want to use a Hebrew name that's in the Old Testament and the New Testament, why not use Emmanuel? Which means, you know, well, we'll take a look at that in a minute. Isaiah 7 and verse 14. Therefore, the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive. Now, the modern Bibles will just say a young woman. Is a young woman getting pregnant? Is that a miracle? I don't think so. But a virgin conceiving, that's a miracle. 
stick with the King James people. And uh, and then those that uh, they love to throw out, oh, you're in that King James only cult. Yeah, well, if your Messiah was just born of a young woman, uh, sorry, but mine is born of a virgin. Big difference. I think there was a an 11 year old who got pregnant down South America. Was that a was that a miracle? No, I think it was an uncle that was uh, taking care of business. If you know what I mean, I'm not trying to be crude, but uh, yeah, an 11 year old. That was not a miracle. Therefore, the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. All right. Now, does it appear in the New Testament? Yes, it does. Let's take a look. Matthew 1, 23. Behold, a virgin shall be with child and shall bring forth a son. And they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. Turn to 1 Timothy 3.16. All right. Uh, and without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh. You don't believe Jesus is God in the flesh? Well, go argue with uh, him when you get to meet him. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up into glory. You want to call him by a Hebrew name? Call him Emmanuel. Yeshua does not appear in the New Testament anywhere. And personally, I think they're doing this Yeshua stuff so that, well, uh, you know, if we're supposed to ask things in Jesus' name, well, if you're asking in Yeshua... Well, maybe, maybe Jesus won't honor your prayer. I, I don't know. You know? Hey, Yeshua, I need uh, some food. And maybe Jesus will say, oh, okay, well, have I'm waiting for Yeshua to answer you. So, uh, you know, it's like you're on the phone and you're getting a busy signal, right? I don't know. But uh, if you want to use a Hebrew word that's in the New and the Old Testament, Emmanuel. How come they don't use that? Matter of fact, people, look in the Noahide laws. Look into them. Matter of fact, uh, it's called Education Day, I think. There's an article on Wikipedia, Wikipedia, um, on Education Day, where they honor Menachem, Rabbi Menachem Schneerson. Yeah, read that article. Very interesting. This is the group that's behind all that. So, all right, let's, uh, let's go into leaven in the Bible. All right, uh, in the first, in part one, we studied a little bit on Passover. And then after the Passover, you had the week of unleavened bread. And if you haven't listened to part one, go to part one. But the purpose of unleavened bread, what you were supposed to do was go through the house and get rid of all the leaven in the house. And what is leaven? Well, let's skip baking soda, baking powder. Let's skip that. Uh, Leaven was yeast, and it would cause bread to rise. Ladies, you know this, and a few guys that know how to cook, well, they know it too. But what does yeast do? Yeast has several functions. Uh, you've got baking yeast, and then you've got brewer's yeast, which they use to make alcohol. Matter of fact, I had a really nice science teacher when I was in uh, high school, Mr. Shepard, I like that guy. He was really, I guess you could say, cool for my generation. And uh, he taught us how to make 
wine. Taught us how to do it. Science experiment. You know, you just take some grape juice and throw some brewer's yeast in it. Next thing you know, um, a little while later, you got wine. The first batch I made was actually not bad. The second batch was terrible. So, kind of gave up on it. So, and I don't drink much anymore anyways. But, you know, the Bible talks um, drinking wine in and of itself isn't bad, but drunkenness is not bad talked about nicely in scripture and if you take something like wine and distill it down um, then you have hard drink what the bible calls hard drink but but the but the purpose of unleavened bread the week of unleavened bread was so that we could reflect upon the sin in our house in our lives and to throw it away so that's just a recap of number one part one all right so let's take a look at some verses in the bible and um well you know well let's take a look all right let's go to matthew chapter 13 And uh, in Matthew 13, we read the following. Oh, uh, let's see. Matthew 13, 33. Another parable spake he unto them. The kingdom of heaven is like unto leaven, which a woman took and hid in three measures of meal till the whole was leavened. Now, I could be wrong. I don't think so, but I could be wrong. But uh, I've heard Bible commentators tell you that this is the only time in Scripture when leaven is good. And they'll tell you that the woman is the church. I just, I can't find anything that supports that. I mean, every time I look at leaven in the Bible, it's bad. And this woman, is this the the whore of Babylon, uh, you know, I'm of the opinion it is. If you disagree with me, that's fine. I, I can't, I, I just, there's just not enough in the Bible to justify this being the woman is the church. So, but let's go and take a look at Levin in the rest of the Bible. All right, let's take a look at Matthew chapter 16. All right, I guess we'll start at verse 1. The Pharisees also with the Sadducees came. Now, this is just two different denominations of the Jews. And we're going to cover that in a little bit. Sorry, right, the Pharisees and the Sadducees came and tempting desired him that he would show them a sign from heaven. Um, now, the Sadducees were the priesthood in the temple. They were the ones that did the animal sacrifices. Uh, their main Bible text was the book of Leviticus, the Levites. All right, so they're asking, they come to Jesus. They want to get a sign from heaven. Verse 2, he, Jesus, he answered and said unto them, when it is evening, ye say, it will be fair weather, for the sky is red. And in the morning, it will be foul weather today, for the sky is red and lowering. O ye hypocrites! That's, that's not very nice, Jesus. You're supposed to love everybody, don't you know that? That's uh, sarcasm, people. O ye hypocrites, how can ye discern the face of the sky, but can ye not discern the signs of the times? A wicked and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign, and there shall no sign be given unto it but the sign of the prophet Jonas. And he left them and departed. And guess what? Jesus was three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. And uh, I did a Bible study on that on uh, Abraham's bosom where he went 
and preached to the spirits in prison. Abraham's bosom. Anybody's interested, write me an email. I'll gladly send you the link, and if I remember, I'll put it in the description. Because it is an interesting thing. What did Jesus do for the three days that his body was uh, killed and before he was resurrected? So, verse 5. And when his disciples were come to the other side, they had forgotten to take bread. Then Jesus said unto them, Take heed. Pay attention, people. Take heed and beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees. And they reasoned among themselves, saying, It is because we have taken no bread. Oh, man, we forgot to take bread. You know, we forgot to go buy that that lovely wonder bread. Oh, we, you know, we should have bought that when we were at the store, but we forgot. No. Verse 8. Which when Jesus perceived, he said unto them, O ye of little faith, why reason ye among yourselves because ye have brought no bread? Do ye not yet understand, neither remember the five loaves of the five thousand, and how many baskets ye took up? Neither the seven loaves of the four thousand, and how many baskets ye took up? How is it that ye do not understand that I spake it not to you concerning bread, but that ye should beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees? Then understood they how that he bade them not beware of the leaven of bread, but of the doctrine, but of the doctrine, the beliefs, the teachings, but of the doctrine of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees. Oh, yeah. Now, what's the difference between the Pharisees and the Sadducees? All right, let's go to Acts chapter 23. Now, Paul is being dragged before the Sanhedrin, which is the court of the religious court of the Jews. Verse 6. But when Paul perceived that one part were Sadducees and the other Pharisees, he cried out in the council, Men and brethren, I am a Pharisee, the son of a Pharisee, of the hope and resurrection of the dead, I am called in question. And when he had so said, there arose a dissension between the Pharisees and the Sadducees, and the multitude was divided. For the Sadducees say that there is no resurrection. Uh, can you imagine that? What kind of idiots would, would, you know, what kind of religion is that? Oh, there is no resurrection. When you die, that's it. It's over. You're dead. You're gone. I mean, there's no hope in that kind of a religion. Zero. So you may as well eat, drink, and be merry. And if you're a tranny, well, you could be um, not M-E-R-R-Y, but you could be M-A-R-Y. You know? I mean, if there's no resurrection, there's no judgment, you know? Um, be like the Satanists. Do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. You know? I mean, I'm, I'm not trying to be vile and cruel, but uh, um, I don't know. I guess I am kind of sarcastic. For the Sadducees, Acts 13, 23, verse 8, for the Sadducees say that there is no resurrection, neither angel nor spirit. Why do they believe that? Because they only believed in the first five books of the Bible. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. But the thing is, they missed the point where uh, when the two angels that were with Abraham, they were called men, but it's not until later when you read the story that the two angels went to go see Lot in Sodom that you find out that they were, that they were angels. So the Sadducees missed the whole point. For the Sadducees say that there is no resurrection, neither angel nor spirit, but the Pharisees confess both. See, the Pharisees acknowledged not just the five books of Moses, 
which is Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy, but they also believed in the prophets, and they also believed in the uh, Psalms and the minor prophets and, you know, the rest. But their problem was that they had all these opinions of the man-made rules of the rabbis, which most of the time they seemed to put the opinions of rabbis over and above the words of God. That's why Christ called them hypocrites. Verse 9, And there arose a great cry, and the scribes that were of the Pharisees part arose and strove, saying, We find no evil in this man, but if a spirit or an angel hath spoken to him, let us not fight against God. Luke chapter 20, uh, I'm sorry, Luke 12, verse 1. In the meantime, when they were gathered together an innumerable multitude of people, in so much that they trod one upon another, he began to say unto his disciples, First of all, beware ye of the leaven of the Pharisees, which is hypocrisy. Hypocrisy. In other words, they tell you what to do, but they won't do it by themselves. They talk the talk, but they don't walk the walk. So, all right, let's go take a look at um, 1 Corinthians chapter 5. We're going to, um, well, let's take a look. 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 1. It is reported commonly that there is fornication among you, and such fornication as is not so much as named among the Gentiles, that one should have his father's wife. So here it is, a son had his father's wife. Not necessarily a mother, could be a stepmother, I don't know. Um, I don't know. But this was strictly forbidden in the Old Testament for a son to have his father's wife. Absolutely forbidden. Verse 2. Now, this is the church in Corinth, which is a Greek city in Greece. Verse 2. And ye are puffed up, and have not rather mourned, that he that hath done this deed might be taken away from you. For I verily, as absent in the body, but present in the spirit, have, have judged already, as though I were present concerning him that hath done, that hath so done this deed. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, not Yeshua, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, when ye are gathered together and my spirit with the power of our Lord Jesus Christ to deliver such an one unto Satan, to deliver such a one unto Satan for the destruction of the flesh. Judgment, people. Judgment. That the spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. Your glorying is not good. Know ye not that a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump? Ooh. Purge out, therefore, the old leaven, that ye may be a new lump, as ye are unleavened. For even Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. And you know what, people? These, these Hebrew roots people will tell you that this doesn't belong in the Bible. Paul's a false apostle. That's what they'll tell you. Does this sound wrong? Oh, well, Paul, Paul doesn't keep the laws. Paul's a false apostle. You know what? Tell these people to go to hell. Seriously. And don't listen to them. At least that's my opinion. For even Christ, our sa Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast... Passover, not with old leaven, neither with the leaven of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. I wrote you in an epistle not to company with fornicators. There you go. Galatians chapter 5. Let's take a look at that. All right, Galatians 5 and verse 9. Paul writes, A little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. 
So there you go, people. Uh, I hope you learned something. And, uh, you know, I just don't see anywhere in the scriptures where leaven is a good thing. I really don't. And like I said many times, the Old Testament was a shadow of things for the New Testament. So, you know what? Don't fall back into the law. Yes, Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. And he also said the, the, the two great commandments, and I'm paraphrasing, to love the Lord and to love thy neighbor. And he said, on all this, hang all the law and the prophets. You know, and if you love your neighbor, you won't kill him, you won't steal from him, you won't try to do his wife, you know. I mean, let's face it. And if you love the Lord, you'll honor him. You won't do things that dishonor him. So, but like I say, if you don't like the name Jesus, well, use Emmanuel. Don't fall for this Hebrew roots, uh, Noahide, sacred name stuff. I mean, because Yeshua appears nowhere in the New Testament, which is written in Greek. So, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and the only begotten Son of God, which is Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world, in Jesus' precious name. Amen.